him. Apologies for such a large gap between videos. We have had the roof of our house taken off and a new one put on, um, which is a loud and noisy, chaotic process. Um, they still haven't put the gutters on the house and then our solar panels have to go back up. Uh, and so, you know, there's just been a lot. It hasn't been conducive to sitting down and filming a video. <laughs> and, uh, but now the quiet of a, of a, a weekend day, although the family is around, so there might still be some noise, um, <laughs> and a rainy day. So roof work cannot be done today. Um, I thought I would sit down and do this quarter year crisis book tag that I came across. I came across it on Jesse's channel and he referenced the original creator of the tag whose name is Roisin, I think. I will leave the link below. This was from, I think, 2022. Uh, but I thought since I haven't finished the book I'm reading right now, and we can talk more about that you know, later too, um, that uh, I, you know, I do this in the meantime. So without further ado, we'll jump in. The first question is, how many books have you read so far this year? Uh, <laughs> and um, I've read 11 that count towards my Goodreads goal. Uh, and some of that is a little bit of fibbing that we will talk about later in this book tag, but yeah, I mean, I've read 11, technically, right? Have you already found a book that you think might be a favorite? Um, no, uh, I, I've reread books that are favorites, but I have not found like a new favorite uh, for the year. Um, most of what I've read has not been up to snuff for me, not, has not met my, I don't want to say expectations, but like, you know, my hopes of uh, when I pick them up. So I've had kind of a rough year in that regard. <laughs> um, and it says, if not, what was a favorite book that you read that wasn't quite a five star read? Well, I reread Dune, which for me is 4.5. I mean, it's, it's largely very good. Uh, I, you know, I rounded up on Goodreads. Uh, I've talked at, at length um, over multiple videos about it, so I won't go too in-depth, but yeah, I really enjoyed rereading it after having not read it since I was like 11 or 12. So um, yeah, great book. And then <laughs> I was so far behind on my reading goal. I picked up, I reread I re the first volume of Nozaki-kun, <laughs> which is one of my favorites. It's something that's just always guaranteed to make me laugh when uh, I'm feeling stressed or down. And I also reread The Epiplectic Bicycle, which is a very short little Edward Gorey uh, book. One of my favorites. I used to read it to my kids all the time when they were young. It was one that they loved. I do all the voices and, you know, it's absurd in the way that Edward Gorey can often be. Uh, you know, kick an alligator on the nose and he rolls over and dies, you know, things like that. Um, but it's just, it's a fun book. And I just pulled it off my shelf and reread that. And you know, it counts, it counts as a book, it counts as something I've read. And that put me back on track with my Goodreads goal of 42 books uh, for the year. <laughs> um, any one star books or least favorite books? Oh, you know, it's, I haven't given anything one star. Um, I gave the Hurricane Wars 1.5. Five. That was a DNF, but I read enough of it to know I was not enjoying it and did not see trying to get through to the end of it. Um, and mo it's just mostly a lot of disappointments. Uh, uh, a Haunting on the Hill, which is that supposed sequel to The Haunting of Hill House. Um, I just, uh, it did not, you know, work for me. Um, I didn't enjoy Gwen and Art are not in love and that should have been right up my alley. So yeah, just a lot of in general feeling kind of disappointed about things that I felt like should have been better. Um, yeah, even, even reading a diamond as big as the Ritz, you know, I generally like Fitzgerald. I know he has his issues, but yeah, that was, 
that wasn't good either. So most read genre so far. I've read a lot of like things that are historical in some way. I've read a lot of things that have fantasy elements and I seem to have read just a lot of books about weird houses or buildings because uh, A Haunting on the Hill and um, Behind the Door and uh, The Only One Left like and even even A Diamond as Big as the Ritz where he's out at this weird estate you know this kind of secluded estate it, it's all and that's the stuff I normally just absolutely love I love haunted house stories I love creepy settings like that so yeah again that just kind of brings me back to being sad that I haven't enjoyed more of what I've read this year um so a book that surprised me though was Behind the Door which is the maybe the only nonfiction I've read so far this year and that one was about the Cecil Hotel and it was uh, written by a previous manager of the hotel. I picked it up thinking it was going to be, you know, supernatural stories, ooh, these spooky things that I witnessed, but it was really more of a memoir and while a lot of people in reviews didn't like that, they were like, oh, this wasn't what I signed on for when I grabbed this book, um, I actually really appreciated it for what it was and enjoyed it regardless of it not being what I expected. Um, so uh, that surprised me. A book coming out, uh, oh, see, so it says a book that's come out already that I want to read but haven't. And this book hasn't come out yet. Um, it is the only book I've that's not the only book I've, I've pre-ordered two books this year. <laughs> One is The Next Black Butler, which should be coming out in June, I think. But the other one uh, was the sequel to Jasper Ford's Shades of Grey, uh, <laughs> 15 years after the Shades of, uh, Shades of Grey came out. Uh, we're finally getting a sequel called Red Side Story, and I'm super excited about it because I love Shades of Grey. It is one of my favorite books, I think. Um, and yeah, I reread Shades of Grey at the end of last year to prepare for the um, sequel, you know, to, to be ready um, to have the refreshed memory after so many years since uh, it came out. But yeah, that is the book that I am looking forward to reading when it arrives. And let's see, one goal you've made that you're succeeding at. Well, I mean, I'm on track with my Goodreads goal now. Um, <laughs> I'm on track by throwing in a couple of quick and dirty re rereads, but it, it, it is what it is. It counts. Um, and the goal I need to focus on, as the next question asks, is probably to read more faster. I, I can't help it. Life keeps happening. Uh, next weekend, I'll be flying out to the East Coast to visit one of the colleges my son is considering. He got accepted there and he wants to take a look at it. Uh, so, you know, that's like a five, six hour plane ride. Maybe I'll be able to read, although I find it hard to read on planes generally. Um, kind of makes me nauseous in the motion sickness kind of way. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and... So any new to you booktubers, book talkers, bookstagrammers, um, I'm not on book talk a whole lot. Somehow I have not fallen into that particular hole or well or whatever. I tend to see a lot of stand-up comedy over there um, and a lot of cat videos. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I and on booktube it seems to me if anything it's harder to find booktubers than it used to be and I don't know if that's the algorithm or if there are a few of like they're they're leaving they're decamping for book talk maybe or just making less content now that life's kind of gone back to normal after the pandemic everybody being stuck at home with nothing else to do but um you know, I, I still watch the ones that I've been watching, uh, Jess Owens, I watch books like Woe, you know, Mara, um, Jessie, who was the one that I found this book through, I, 
I watch Reads with Rachel pretty regularly, um, depending on what she's talking about. And yeah, so um, those those are the ones I watch. Uh, I watch Emily Fox sometimes too. Um, if you have recommendations for really good book talkers, book tubers, um, leave it in the comments because I'm always looking for more content like that. <laughs> I'm always like, has anybody got something new? Is there anything new? Uh, so, you know, let me know who you watch besides me. And again, thanks for being here. Um, but yeah, uh, and like I said, I will leave the link to the original creator for this tag and maybe also the link for Jesse's video that caused me to you know, find this tag. Uh, the book I'm reading now is The Leftovers by Tom Parada. Uh, I watched The Leftovers way back when it was on, was that an HBO show, I think? Um, was that called Max Now? But it was HBO then. Um, and I really, really enjoyed the show. I know it was based on a book, or at least the first season was based on a book. And I kind of had it in my head, oh, I should read that sometime. And then I just never did. But I was browsing the library. They didn't have the book I was actually looking for. And I just happened to see the leftovers on the shelf. And I thought, hey, I meant to read that. I like that show. That's a show I've actually thought about rewatching. I haven't rewatched it, but I've thought about it. <laughs> um, so I grabbed it and that is what I'm reading now. I am about 60% of the way through. I liked the show, um, the book. So, you know, I, the book is, follows the first season more or less, but feels like it has less plot, I guess. Um, I picture all of the characters as they were portrayed in the TV series, so, you know, picturing, you know, Carrie Coons and Chris Eccleston and, you know, all of these, these characters. Um, but it's clear it got punched up a bit uh, for television. So we'll see when I get to the end. The book is very lit -fic. It's It's very just, let's explore these characters and how they are interwoven as opposed to let's look at this phenomenon and see if we can figure out what happened to people or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's well written, it's very smoothly written, but, um, you know, it's, it's lit fic, which isn't usually my preference for reading. I typically don't enjoy literary fiction just because I do find it kind of pointless and boring and meandering to some degree. This one is fine, mostly I think because I have the touchstone of having watched the television series, but um, when I get to the end of it, I will make a video about it. And um, I picked this one up because it was a library book I forgot I still had. And the library reminded me, hey, you have this um, and we would like it back. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I will read that and then return it. And then I'll go on to Dune Messiah. So that is coming. <laughs> um, and I'll try to fit that in before uh, Red Side Story shows up in May and I read that. So that's the, more or less my plan, my planned TBR, finish the leftovers, read Dune Messiah, then Red Side Story should be here and uh, we'll go from there. But in any case, um, <laughs> until next time, uh, you know, again, let me know which books you've read uh, and enjoyed or hated. Um, if you've read any of the ones I mentioned, I have videos for most of them. And, um, you know, which, which booktubers I should check out uh, if I didn't mention one of your favorites. Um, if there's somebody that I haven't come across, because again, the algorithm kind of feeds me a lot of true crime, because I do like true crime. It feeds me a lot of film reviews and film criticism, because I like film essays too. Uh, but yeah, I don't see a whole lot of, um, book related stuff these days. I used to see a lot more of it. So, you know, let me know where I can find some good stuff and until next time, take care.